प्रभुपद तना सेवक सदा महाशास्त्राभ्यासी व्यरथ न गुमा वे पड़कदा करे वार्ता ज्यारे सुर सरित धारा समवहे कुसंगी सत्संगी सकल जन चित्ते अति चहे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे घनश्याम महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे Almighty Supreme Lord Swami Narayan, the path maker to our liberation, our inspire, Pujapad Guruji, and all of you humble devotees, my humble Jay Swami Narayan. <clears throat> you know how in school, when you take the classes of chemistry, or geometry, it requires you to memorize many, many formulas. For example, in geometry, you have to memorize the Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now you can only apply this formula in certain situations, not everywhere, or in chemistry or physics where Einstein gave us a formula of relativity, or in chemistry, various formulas are used. Through these formulas, what you do is you plug the numbers into the formulas, you calculate with your calculator, and then the answer is given. If you use the formula in the right way, and if you put those numbers in the right places. That's the only if. But today, I want to give you a formula which can be used not only in this world, but can also be used in the spiritual world. You're probably wondering, what kind of formula is that? Well, this formula is such, well, there's a saying, you know how if you want to gain something, you also have to lose something. It's called a compromise. But more than that, this formula is such where you don't have to compromise anything, meaning you don't have to lose anything. It's a win-win situation. And the formula is P plus P plus P equals P cubed. You're probably wondering, what kind of formula are you talking about? It's just a bunch of P's. No. The P's define a certain attribute that you must possess in order to succeed. And all three of these attributes are needed. The first P stands for persistence. The second P stands for prayer. And the third P stands for patience. When these three are combined, no matter what kind of task you do, you will always succeed. Just think, in the world, what does everyone want to do? Everyone wants to succeed. Everyone wants to become successful. Whether it's in this world, becoming a doctor, or passing an exam, or getting a high score in your MCATs, these are all characteristics of success that one wants to achieve. If you think about it, from the beginning of life, your parents have programmed you in such a way that success is the only way to go, meaning work hard to get good grades, that's a form of success, meaning have a good work ethic so that you get a promotion. That's a form of success. Nevertheless, we do this in the world and we succeed. And we feel good in the heart. But sometimes we fail. And the reason why we fail, we don't know. But out of these three Ps, 
We're lacking one of them. That's why we fail. If we had all three of these, we would success in any field, in any way. As I said before, in the worldly perspective or the spiritual perspective. Now, when we start, we first will talk about persistence. Now, simply persistence is to keep going, keep doing, not giving up. To give an example of persistence, one must picture stair steps. Walking up the stair steps is considered to be persistence. Walking down the stair steps is considered to be giving up. Now, I know it's hard, but what isn't hard in this world? Just think. Running a marathon, 26 miles approximately. That's a sign of persistence. Not only physical persistence, because one may not have the physical stamina, the physical muscles, yet there's many, many out there who run marathons all the time on a yearly basis, but it's all on willpower and mind power. If you're firm about something, then you can push the body over its limit and still succeed without damaging one's body. Obviously, you don't want to hurt the other side. But you also want to use your mind in order to push your body in such a way that you can succeed in whatever you're trying to do. I'm reminded of a story of a Scottish freedom fighter. His name was Robert Bruce. I don't know if you've heard of him or not, but I want to tell you a little brief history about him, his life what he did and how he or how his life reflected on this particular word we're focusing on. Robert Bruce was a freedom fighter for his country, Scotland. Now, in his time, Scotland and Great Britain were at war. A great war was waging. And Robert Bruce was obviously a freedom fighter. So he fought against Great Britain. Great Britain was the stronger power out of the two. He went up against Great Britain six various times and lost. He tried and tried, but then obviously if one fails too much, then obviously the other option is giving up. But Robert Bruce's men mentality was so broken that he decided to commit suicide. But one day, while he was resting underneath a tree, he saw a spider making its web. Now, that spider was making its web, but it fell six different times while making its web because it could not get from one place to another to make the connection for the web. Yet, on the seventh time, the spider successfully made its web and made the connection. Through that, through a small insect, Robert Bruce got inspiration that if this spider could do this on the seventh time, I have failed six times, but I still have a seventh chance to win. So again, he went against Great Britain with his soldiers. And he actually won that time. Now the inspiration was a spider, but more than that, what he took from the spider's actions, what he grasped from the spider's action was very important. He didn't see that it was just a spider. He saw himself inside the spider. He put himself inside the shoes in the place of that spider. Due to that, his inspiration grew. And from that, his persistence grew. So, a simple sign of persistence, or a simple meaning, is to keep going. 
Now I gave you an example in this world, of this world, a person. But spiritually, persistence is very important as well. And the story that goes with that is a devotee by the name of Sundarji Suthar. Sundarji Suthar was a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And one day, Bhagwan was residing in the village of Bandia at Mulubai's home. And Sundarji decided to go to have the darshan of Sri Ji Maharaj. So he went there. When he arrived, he took off his turban and bowed down to the feet of Bhagwan, folded his hands very humbly. Sri Ji Maharaj says, Who has come? Bhagat, um, Sundarji Suthar said, Your servant. Sri Ji Maharaj was testing him. Sri Jumar is asked, what is the character, characteristic of a servant? Whatever his master says to do, this is what he replied. Well, Sri Jumar says, his master is saying to shave your mustache and your hair and become a saint and go on the pilgrimage to Kashi. Sundarji Suthar bowed down and agreed and did as Bhagwan said. He shaved everything, his hair, became a saint, and went to become, or went on the pilgrimage to Kashi. On his way there, he had probably traveled a couple miles, and Sri Marj again called another devotee by himself, besides him, and told to go fetch Sundari Sutar back. So the devotee fetched him back. And again, Sri Maharaj asked, Who are you? Sundarji Suthar with folded hands said, Your servant, Maharaj, of course. Maharaj asked again, What is the characteristic of a servant? Sundarji Suthar again replied, Whatever his master says to do. Well then, again, Sri Maharaj said, Take off the clothes of the saints, a saint, and again put on the clothes of a householder. So that's what Sundari Suthar did. And through that, Bhagwan became so pleased upon him because of his actions. Moreover, because of his virtue of persistence. How could you say that? What do you think? Obviously, he showed servitude. But more than that, his willingness to keep trying and trying to please Bhagwan, that is the persistence that I'm talking about today for this formula to work successfully. Obviously, this formula can work, as I said before, in any task, but let's use it for religious purposes more than worldly purposes. So, that's number one. Persistence, that's the first P. Moving on to the second P, prayer. Now when all else fails, man resorts to prayer as a lifeline. Prayer is to the food. Prayer is food for the soul. It is known that prayer is the soul, is the soul what breathing is to the body. Now everyone's heard of the freedom fighter, Mahatma Gandhi. Now, Mahatma Gandhi was the leader of India, but he had much struggle in his life. Gandhi was frail and weak, but his determination was outstanding. Even the enemy, Winston Churchill, said once, I fear the old man from India. Well, what do you think Winston Churchill was fearing him about. Obviously, during the battle between India and Great Britain, Great Britain was the top superpower and India was the underdog. Great Britain had ammunition, the navy, the army, all kinds of governmental power 
wealth to defeat India. India did not have a, a stable infrastructure or a stable economy. Yet, why did Winston Churchill have to say that I fear the old man from India? What was it? Mahatma Gandhi didn't have a gun. Mahatma Gandhi didn't have wealth. Yet, what did he have that made him Mahatma Gandhi? Well, it was prayer. Prayer is such a powerful, you can say, source of energy that with prayer, it's directly connecting you with you and God. Now, let me give you an example. If you had direct contact with the President of the United States, how much power would you be in? You would be walking down the street or you would be doing any kind of activity. How much power would you be in? You would have power that I know the President of the United States. I have connection with him. I have contact with him. I can, co I can call him and tell him to do this and he would do this. One would be so much in power. One would be so, you can say, confident. One would be kind of unstoppable because he has the power that I have contact with the president. In the same way, a person who has the strength of prayer has the confidence that I have connection with God. What kind of God? The one who is the creator, destroyer, and sustainer of not only this world, but infinite universes. The one who resides in everyone. The one who is beyond everything and all. The one who is untouchable, imperishable, undestructible. Such a God I have a connection with. So then, if some enemy like Winston Churchill or the country of Great Britain makes threats or even does a little damage to the country, what is there to fear? Would you rather have a thousand people on your side or would you alone have God on your side? It's your choice. What would you pick? That's why Winston Churchill feared Mahatma Gandhi was because of his prayer, his powerful faith in God. And through Mahatma Gandhi's prayer and faith in God, independence was gained from the clutches of Great Britain because of one man that was Mahatma Gandhi. There's a saying, no prayer, no power. Little prayer, little power, and much prayer, much power. Prayer is power. Power not physical, but not only mental power, but spiritual power. And spiritual power cannot be taken away. In this world, there's many, many statuses. The status of a CEO or a CFO or the status of a president or the status of a secretary of state, or the status of, you can say, chief marshal, or the status of a lieutenant. These are all statuses that people put labels on other people. And through that, people just go about their work and admire those who have high statuses and high titles. But in reality, does that really matter? More than your title, more than your power in this world, spiritual power is something that can never vanish. So, when you're thinking about becoming a great millionaire or becoming some kind of great person with the highest status in this world, just remember, it's not going to last as long as you think it's going to last. 
So also try to develop some kind of spiritual power as well. But back to our point, prayer is the most powerful weapon the human can possess. Why? Because it's a direct connection with God. Small story. There was a grandfather who was just about to leave his home. His grandson asked, where are you going? The grandfather explained that there's a severe drought in the region and many people and cattle are dying. So I'm going to the temple to pray. The grandson asked if you could come, if he, he asked if he could come, the grandfather allowed his grandson to come. They were leaving the home and the grandson grabbed an umbrella. The grandfather asked, why did you grab the umbrella? Because it's going to rain, because God will listen to our prayer and he will shower us with rain. The grandson's faith showed the grandfather what he was lacking. This story explained that a small boy, he had such kind of faith, the power of prayer, that the grandfather had to go or was going to the temple to pray. But the son himself declared that I will pray here and through that if it rains, I should take an umbrella. So this is the power of prayer. That's the second P. And finally, the third P is patience. Now, patience is said to be a virtue. Patience is something that everyone should possess. For example, suppose you are a junior in high school and you've just taken your SATs. Now, before your test, you took those classes, those private classes for six months, going every Saturday for at least five hours, just like school. And they teach you these kind of techniques to get really good grades and try to really solve the formulas that are asked on the SATs. So you study and you feel confident. On the day of the test, you take the test, and you're not so confident. You feel you've made mistakes. You regret that you chose this answer over this answer. You kind of feel that I, shouldn't, I should have tried harder, or those classes were a waste. And after the test, not only for one day or two day, for several weeks or several months, because the SAT is such a big score, you put this load on yourself. You put this weight on yourself. You feel very, very terrible and horrible. Every day when you wake up, that's all you think about. I hope I didn't do bad. I hope I didn't do bad. But if you were calm, if you had the virtue of patience, you would know that I have studied this much time and put this much effort. Now, during the test, I might have made a couple mistakes, but that doesn't mean that I haven't gotten a good score. If you just simply think like this and kind of hold the virtue of patience in your hands, then those three months afterwards, post-test, you wouldn't feel such a weight on yourself. Your days would not go gloomy and bad because you knew that patience was with you in your hands all along. But if you didn't have patience, then you would just throw everything away. Your day would go bad, and other things due to that would become spoiled, like your other tests that you have to still take, your final exams, your quizzes, your homework. So much things would be spoiled. But only if you possess a little bit of patience, 
then you would at least feel confident that sure, I may have made mistakes, but let's wait until the exams come. And sometimes what happens is that when the exam score does come, you have a great score and that's too late to become relieved of because those three months that you're waiting, so much other things were spoiled. So patience is needed from the beginning to the end. It's a throughout process. Now, regarding, I'm reminded of a story of a king. Now, a king of a kingdom, he went for a walk in the nighttime. When he came back from his walk, he saw his queen resting on the bed. And next to his queen, he saw someone else resting. The person was covered. The king saw this. Who's in my position? Who's in my place? Became furious. Became very upset and pulled out his sword. And was ready to kill both the queen and the person sleeping next to the queen. But right as he was about to do it, he saw the quote right above by the wall that said patience is a virtue. So calmly, he placed the sword back in his holder and waited. After some time, the person next to the queen woke up and the king found out it was none other than his daughter. Now, if he did not read that quote, what would have happened? He would have not only murdered his wife or his queen, but he would also have murdered his daughter. And afterwards, he would become so depressed due to his actions. But he possessed patience before his actions. Due to that, there was no failure. To review, Robert Bruce, persistence. He failed six times, but on the seventh time, he succeeded. Mahatma Gandhi, underdog, was overpowered by Great Britain. But due to his prayer, due to his force of prayer, and due to his strong faith, he also was successful. And number three, this king, seeing that quote of patience and not engaging in his actions without thinking, made him successful. So this formula of the three Ps, persistence, prayer, and patience, are a win-win situation for those who apply it not only for worldly circumstances, but also to attain God, our ultimate goal in the spiritual world. So practice this formula, memorize this formula, apply this formula, and see what happens. Saying this, my humble day, Swami Nanay.